11 and a half months from now, when we're celebrating this year 2021, how is your cooking going to be any different? Or is it going to be the same? We're going to talk about setting your cooking goals for the new year today on the Carefree Cooks Code. I'm Chef Todd Moore, and this is the Carefree Cooks Code, every Tuesday live at noon Eastern. Here's our challenge. How can home cooks cook freely with creativity, confidence, and pride while ignoring recipes and still impressing themselves and others with what they cook? Well, the answer is found in becoming empowered with how cooking works, using dependable and repeatable methods of cooking that work for any ingredient, for any diet, and any desire, just like chefs do. And we'll know we've cracked it when everyone sees cooking as an exciting and rewarding way to improve their relationships, their lifestyles, and their health through better food and cooking. This is the Carefree Cooks Code. Boom. Hey, welcome back to the Carefree Cooks Code, everyone. We are live every Tuesday at noon Eastern. And if you didn't get my email reminder about today's class, you should go to webcookingclasses.com slash live and join our email alert system. If you got my email today and every Tuesday morning, there's nothing you need to do. Don't worry about it because you're with us. You know who we are. We're the Carefree Cooks. We create our own recipes, which brings friends and family toward us. We learn every time we cook an important distinction. We create our own cooking style because we practice pro methods. And how could you not love your cooking after all that? It makes it seem like a lot of fun, right? And we're off to a great start in 2020. I told you I was going to be with you and I'm already live. We're already doing cool things. We're going to do more cool things. I told you I'm going to support you through all your goals this year. You know I am so excited about all the new things that we could possibly come up with. My goal, one of my goals for this year, I want to learn more about Mexican food. I've been traveling down to Mexico and back and and, and some of the food and like Belize and some of the Yucatan Peninsula there, like the sauces that they make, I, I don't I don't know how to do it. I, I got to admit, I bought an enchilada sauce in a can the other day just so I could like taste it and smell it and then research it and try and figure out what mine is going to be. So my goal for the coming year is Mexican food. I want to know how they make those tortillas. I want to know how they cook that chicken the way they do. That's one of my cooking goals for the coming year. But look, before I get into that, I've got a what am I for you today. Here it is. It's a gadget today. This thing right here. Uh, have you had one of those? Did grandma have one of those? You turn the, the crank there and music comes out. No, music doesn't come out. It's not a organ grinder monkey. But do you know what it is? Do you know what it's called? Tell me in the comments section below. It's the what am I for today. And like I said, it's a brand new year. We've got to get ready for the new year. I hate to put pressure on you already. I know we're just barely getting into 2020, but I hate to tell you, it's about 350 or so breakfasts, 350 lunches, there's about 350 dinners ahead of you in the coming year, right? How are you going to handle all this? It seems, if you look at it at the beginning of the year, it, it seems like a daunting task, but all you got to do is look back behind you and know that you already made like a thousand ninety meals in the previous year. Okay, you go out for lunch and you go out for dinner. Let's just call it a thousand or seven hundred or whatever it might be. You're going to do a lot of cooking this year. How is your cooking going to be any different? That's the question I want you to ask yourself today. It's the question that I ask myself. Everybody makes promises to themselves for the new year and resolutions. I'm not saying it needs to be a resolution, but I'm saying one of the main tenets of being a carefree cook is you've got to learn more. You, you, you have to progress. Uh, uh, we carefree cooks were never quite satisfied right, with what it is. There's got to be a better way to do that. There's got to be a new flavor I can put into it. There's got to be a quicker, easier way. There's got to be a way that I can do it with less dishes, whatever it might be. 
ask yourself how your cooking is gonna be different on December 31st, 2020. Might seem intimidating, but look, we got a lot of time to work on it, okay? There's a lot of time. So is your cooking gonna be exactly the same or are you gonna get some new cooking goals for this year? And it doesn't have to be a lot of them. You got a thousand plus meals to work on it. You can give up on them and pick a new goal and then try another thing. But you know, again, the key, one of the keys to breaking the Carefree Cooks code is progression, is, is seeing these different things. And so before the ball drops again, let's talk about some of the goals that you can set in the coming year. And you know, in all my years of teaching cooking, I find that it all comes down to three major reasons why people wanna move their cooking forward. So there you go. I just made it so much easier for you. I took it from a thousand to three, <laughs> okay? Cause you know, I think one of the keys to learning is categorizing things. I always have the five this or the three this, or uh, we're always putting things into categories. So if, if you're gonna start cooking, there's probably three reasons that you're gonna set your cooking goal for this coming year. And of course, there's the for your health goal. And this is why a lot of people do come to our Carefree Cooks community. I say a lot of people come from the doctor's office to learn how to cook. Uh, because so many of these diagnoses, so many of these things, you really can help with your cooking. And I, I consider this the goal of need to. All right, so if you have a need to goal, if you have a resolution, a desire that's attached to your health and wellness, this is a very important goal. And this is gonna have to do with the foods that you decide to cook, the cooking methods that you do, the food choices that you make. And if it's something like you need to lose weight, uh, you, you feel like you need more energy, you're a little sluggish, you just need to do what the doctor told you, then this is the need that you have. Say to yourself, I'm going to set a cooking goal for my health this year. It's going to be a need to goal. Someone told me I need to do it, whether it's you or your doctor. Write it on the refrigerator if you want, on a piece of paper, not directly, not directly onto the refrigerator like when you were a kid with magic markers. No, on a piece of paper, put it on the refrigerator. I have a cooking goal for my health. You'll see it every day, you'll be amazed how it'll come true. Uh, some people have a cooking goal for others, and this is the cooking goal of have to. Some people have a cooking goal of have to provide for my family. I'm the one that, that makes dinner. Um, maybe you're the one that is responsible for making the food choices for your family that leads to the earlier need to goal, right? Uh, it's another have to when you have to stick to a food budget. It's another have to when your store doesn't carry all the things that you want. And it's certainly another have to when you, you decide you can't waste money. You, you can't do a lot of takeout food. You, you can't do a lot of these convenience foods and restaurant foods because you feel guilty when you trade convenience, uh, time for convenience. You know, you're, you're swapping, ah, it's easy easy to go through the drive-through, easy to order something that's delivered. Well, if you feel that you have a have-to responsibility for your family, you know those things aren't working out for you. So write it on a piece of paper, put it on your refrigerator. I have a cooking goal for others this year in 2020. My cooking goal is for others. Some of us just have the for myself cooking goal. Whether you are by yourself, whether you are in a large family or a large community, there's no problem having a goal strictly for yourself. I'm totally for that. If you are all about improving yourself, regardless of what you feed everyone else, I'm all for it. And this is the want to goal. This is what I call the want to, when you want to understand how cooking works. You, you just don't need to make something healthy. You just don't follow a recipe to get dinner done for your family because that's the thing. You really want to know how cooking works, right? You're curious about this. Maybe the want to is wanting to recreate a forgotten family recipe. I get people write me all the time as if I'm a forensic 
chef <laughs> somehow. I cannot replace grandma's recipe. I just can't. It mostly had to do with the way that grandma did it. No doubt about it. So you need to create something off into the future. Create this, try, go on this goal, go on this entire journey all year long to recreate grandma or grandpa's recipe. And I guarantee you, you're going to come up with something brand new that you're going to pass on to your kids or grandkids that they're going to try and figure out how to recreate 50 years from now, right? That sounds like a fun thing to do all year long. And you know, if you want to finally figure out the best blank, like whatever it is, I know you've been chasing something. You want the best loaf of bread. You're into bread baking. You want to grill the best steak you ever have. You love macaroni and cheese. You're going to make the best cheese sauce ever. You don't care if it takes you 11 and a half months to do it. By the time that ball drops and we're kissing somebody, you want to be confident that your mac and cheese sauce is the greatest it's ever been. I know it's the most important thing to you on New Year's Eve is that your mac and cheese sauce is the best. I know it's the, mo it's the most important thing to me. All right. Of course, I'm being silly, but this this is the goal of desires, okay? What what do you want your cooking to be? And look, that's not to say that all three of these goals, they're, they're not mutually exclusive, right? You can have any one of them, any two of them, any three of them, and set them as a goal for the coming year. Maybe you want to figure out how and why cooking works because you want to cook healthier and provide for your family. That's all three of them. You know, so you can accomplish all three with any one. And that's why I'm here for you. That's why I want us to work together. My goal all year long is for you to reach your goals. No matter how I have to do that, we're going to figure it out. But if you don't know what your goals are yet, then it's really hard to reach them. And I've done a lot of studying about this. The very act of writing something down. I am going to make a great sauce this year. I am going to figure out how to make such and such this year. I am going to eliminate fats or explore healthier fats. I don't care what it is. You know, all I care is that you cook. But part of breaking the carefree cooks code should start right now. Right now with your need to, have to, or want to, to improve your cooking over the next thousand meals, <laughs> 1,038 meals, which of these are going to be your goal? Okay. So once you get the category, is it a need to want to, or have to category that you're going to go with it? Luckily it's pretty easy because there is always a method behind it. You know, I say that there's always a method behind cooking and it always comes from the way that chefs are taught in culinary school. You know this was the big aha for, for me is that I was chasing cookbooks and celebrity chefs for the longest time until I found out they're, they're teaching it totally different over here. And you know, this becomes a really difficult journey. If you're following recipes, if you're, you're watching entertaining TV shows, if you're trying to find written instructions and you're frustrated because you don't learn each time you cook, you can't reach any of these goals you have if you're running on a treadmill. But you know, when you practice a repeatable method, when you take mental notes each time, when you recognize what you did well and what you could do better, then you improve when you cook, you actually learn. That's why I'm so big on this. And if you're in our Carefree Cooks community, you see it anytime. You see the pride, you read the pride and somebody that's like, I, I'm on lesson number two and I just created my first saute. I did chicken with mushrooms and I deglazed with this and I made a sauce with that and so on. And you see what I comment, right? Ask yourself what you did well. Ask yourself what you could do better. Repeat the dish, make mental notes, ask yourself what you did well, ask yourself what you could do better. Repeat the dish, make mental notes, ask yourself, this is the way, this is the path to becoming truly free in your cooking because things improve each time. Things gather like, like, a, like a rolling stone, right? Gathering, getting bigger like an avalanche. This is the way to reach your cooking goals by the time we reach December of 2020. Okay, so how do you do this? Chef Todd, break it down for me. Make, make it even easier, right? You know the saying, uh, the old saying, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? You know, it's metaphorically, terrible things are happening to elephants. I'm not saying that. 
But how do you reach your goals? One bite at a time, right? One method at a time. And I've got some suggestions for you. And as I show you these, okay, I'm going to flash through them really quickly. As, and this is like a Rorschach test because I want to see what lights up your, your brain. Like, aha, I want to know that, okay? So try and recognize that. Think about whether any of these suggestions are right for you and whether they fit into a need to, have to, or want to category for you. So one of the keys to breaking the Carefree Cook's code is understanding how heat affects food. Because the whole key to cooking is anticipating the four effects of heat on food. Once you are able to recognize them by sight, then you can anticipate what is going to happen to food when you cook it. And then you never need a recipe book. You never need a clock. You, want, you don't cook by time anymore, and you can ignore whatever the oven temperature is. Everybody knows it. If you're a member of web cooking classes, you know this is the very first thing that we teach there because that is the key to cooking, in my opinion. So is this a goal for you? Do you really want to figure out how cooking works? Is it a need to, want to, or have to? I'll give you an example. It was a little disappointment that I had. I read something, uh, actually a few things in the Carefree Cooks community this week about people trying to cook frozen items, taking items from the freezer, putting them on a sheet pan and putting it in the oven, and they wonder why they have a lot of liquid in the pan and the items don't ever get brown. Of course, moisture inhibits caramelization of sugars. You can't toast a wet piece of bread. Soak some bread in water, put it in your toaster. Oh no, that's dangerous. Don't do that. But you, you get the idea. A wet piece of bread is not going to toast and wet items from the freezer aren't. But if you focus on the four effects of heat on food, you'll know how to get things brown and crispy by drying them and make sure, making sure they're really dry. Next thing is being able to repeat a basic cooking method over and over and over that's going to give you the result that you're looking for. You know, if you want to come up with really quick meals, okay, let's say you've got the need to goal, that you got to get dinner done for your family and you don't want to open boxes with powdered sauces in it and stuff like that, you might want to look into a basic cooking method. And I start people with the nine steps in the basic saute method. But you know, saute is quick, it's easy, it's one pan, but there's some things that it doesn't do. It doesn't cook a larger item, uh, it, it uh, dries things out, so on. And maybe that's a goal for you to cook more quickly in a better fashion with better ingredients. Or maybe you love to be outside, you want that charred item, right? You like those, pardon me, grill marks, that smoky flavor. Maybe you should be practicing the steps in grilling, learning how to get an internal temperature, right? A perfect internal temperature without charring it on the outside. Maybe you're going to examine combination cooking methods with grilling where you move the item off the heat source, close the lid, add some liquid or some smoke and really get some flavor on your grilling. There, there's so much more to grilling than just putting the item on the grill and taking it off. And by the way, just because you're a man doesn't mean you were born knowing how to grill, okay? It's not just a man's world. I love when, when women write me and they're like, Chef Todd, your steps in grilling, I push my husband out of the way now. I love it. And look, if you find yourself cooking in boiling water, got to stop that for the new year, all right? There is definitely room for improvement here because by knowing the difference between boil, simmer, and poach, you'll start controlling heat like you would in a dry fashion. But so many people just blaze away when it comes to cooking something in liquid. Maybe th this is where you get more out of your um, uh, healthier ingredients. You look at the moist cooking methods this year. This is a need to goal for sure because in moist cooking methods, there's no added fat. Some of the healthiest cooking methods there are are steaming and poaching for sure. And if you want more fish, or vegetables in your diet, yes, yeah, steaming. The steaming method is great. Go deep on steaming. Figure out the different bamboo steamers or how high off the liquid or how you flavor the liquid or whether you sear the item ahead of time to make it brown and then steam it, you know? The, this can make some of the most flavorful, the most moist, the most tender veggies or fish that you can. Um, in web cooking classes, we show you the tricks for retaining the color of them with baking soda and acids and so on. It's really, really cool. People dismiss it. Moist cooking methods.
And you know, if you want to make great stews and chilies, if you want to make a really cheap cut of meat, real tender, if you want to examine the step-by-step -step procedures and combination cooking methods, like braising and stewing, you can do that. This is where you take cheap cuts of meat. You know how to use acids to tenderize them in a low and slow cooking process. And you wind up making something really delicious and tender. So are your goals about making the best sauces this year? Learn how to make a great roux. Are your goals about a broths, flavorful liquids, doing bone broths this year? Maybe you love breakfast and the best ever omelet is your goal. Don't brown those omelets. Don't, don't. <laughs> to me, in culinary school, that's a fail. You burned the egg. Uh, an omelet should be yellow. Follow that. Chase that for the coming year, right? Is, is there better understanding for you about how eggs cook? Do you want to poach eggs this year? Instead of making an omelet, do you, you want to start making your own pastas and fill them with things that you can't buy in the store? Do you want to start making fluffy rice instead of sticky rice? Maybe your goal this year is finally fixing that gloppy rice that you've been making. It, there's a way. There's a method to it, right? Uh, is there a difference between herbs and spices? Are your herbs and spices like six months to five years old? It's like trying to season things with sawdust. Maybe you're going to examine really forever now. Solve this problem for yourself this year. What herbs and spices go together? How am I going to put my ethnic spice teams together like we teach? Um, are you going to start making advanced sauces like hollandaise and beurre blanc? Are you going to start baking your own breads this year? Are you going to start making amazing creamy soups? Are you going to do your own bone broths and stocks? This is all within your reach this year. When you set your intention, write down your goal for yourself. Focus on how you are going to cook rather than what you are going to cook this year. And 1,035 meals or so later, you're going to be amazed at how your cooking has improved. Without buying a single cookbook, Without having to watch some celebrity on TV for his instruction, you can finally enjoyment, enjoy it for the education factor that it is. You don't have to watch the TV for hours and hours. You're not going to be subjected to the 20 commercials every 18 minutes. Because when you focus on the methods of cooking, there really is a simple way to see how your cooking has gotten much better like this. Take pictures. Take photos of what you do. This is what our carefree cooks do. I see it all the time. I love it. People that have broken the carefree cooks code are the ones that have taken photos of their food and then they look back on this a month later, a year later, and they immediately can see how far their cooking has gotten. And look, don't bother writing down recipes. This, people tell me this all the time. Oh, I gotta write, it was so good, I gotta write it down, I gotta make it again. I guarantee you're not gonna make it again. Writing stuff down is a total waste of time. I, I did it, I tell the story all the time. When I was in culinary school, I was writing all my original recipes like crazy. I filled two composition notebooks. I have 400 original recipes in this closet <laughs> behind me. You know how many of them I've cooked twice? Not a single one. Because when you're constantly creating your own recipes, you never have to make them twice. Forget writing it down. Focus on taking the photos, right? It's a lot easier to do than you look and say, oh my goodness, look how terrible that sauce was. Look how smooth it is now. Look how much better that steak is and you see your progress. You can do it. You can reach these goals. You have to work toward achieving them though. But I've been doing this for a long time now. Web cooking classes celebrated 10 years. Last September, I have talked to home cooks all over the world from the people that thought they were helpless to the people that thought they knew everything and there is always something new to learn. There is always a progression of skills that you can make and I know you can do it. I see it every day, all the time because I'm in our Carefree Cooks community. Every day I'm monitoring what's going on there. I'm watching your progress. I can't possibly comment on everything but I'm seeing how you're doing no matter what your goal is. 
and I see people trying to make better loaves of bread. I see other people working on their sauces and their ruse. I see people discovering new foods and new inspirations from other members or their travels or other cuisines. We have an amazing community and we are just about to break 10,000 members. It's incredible. So it's about to get real hot. <laughs> in our Carefree Cooks community. 2020 is going to be the best year ever, especially if we all set our intentions and we all set our goals. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Things that are going on in our Carefree Cooks community. It's time for the dish of the week. These are the people that are honing their skills. These are the people that are developing talents in the kitchen. It's, it's, it's not just cooking. You know, it's not just about getting dinner done today. It, it is just, it means so much more than getting dinner done. It means more to them and their pride and their confidence and their creativity. It's amazing. Uh, Paula has been working on her ravioli. She said it gets better every time. I love to hear things like that. And she did a butternut squash ravioli and a shrimp velote that she made with shrimp cubes that she pulled out of her freezer, right? These are with some of our little carefree cooks tricks. Make your own shrimp stock from the shells. Always tough to say. Put it in an ice cube tray and you've got shrimp stock from shells that you can pull out into your saute. It's a tongue twister, but it tastes great. So really cool. So she's able to make the raviolis, make her stock. That's a progression of skills for sure. Uh, Peter has been working on his roux. Uh, this is a blonde roux he's come up with. He says it's been watery. He's not quite sure. He's playing with the flour. He's adjusting the ratios. A little bit too stiff in the past, but he says this batch is just like Goldilocks. I don't know if he said that or if I <laughs> said that. You know, not too watery, not too stiff. It's just right, Mama Bear. Nicely done, Peter. Cool. I love seeing what Moro makes. He is like an international uh, cook in our Carefree Cooks community. This is his pho soup, P-H-O. I believe it's pronounced pho. And you know how crazy I am <laughs> about the survival soups about this time of year? This is one of the best you can make. But here's the thing about the pho, it's got to be great stock, right? It is all about the flavor of that liquid. Moro, that's a beautiful soup. It just warms me up. Rub my hands on that soup there. It warms me up just looking at it. Uh, Ruth Ann is working on her risotto. Risotto is the coolest. It's the most fantastic dish. And it's the kind of thing that you kind of become obsessed with because you can always improve it next time. I mean, my risotto is never finished. I'm always thinking about what I can do. You can try different flavors. You can try different combinations of things. You can infuse different flavors in the liquids. Risotto is a blank canvas of, of exploration. You could spend the next 11 and a half months playing with risotto for sure. But uh, Ruth Ann made her garlic risotto to go with this uh, beautiful creamy chicken dish that she created as well. Really nice. Nicely, nicely done. Uh, Christy's been working on her crepes. Here's another thing that you can set for the coming year. Um, it takes a little bit of practice, right? Your dog is going to appreciate how bad your first few crepes are. The first crepe is for the dog, as the saying goes, until you get it just right, you know? And crepes are one of those things, man, it's like one batch and it clicks in, like all of a sudden, oh my God, I know how to make crepes. And I can make them by the dozens now. And it becomes so easy. All of a sudden, it seems like the simplest thing in the world. And once you can whip up some great crepes, they can be sweet crepes with fruit for the dessert. They can be savory crepes with seafood or chicken. Nicely done, Christy. Crepes are a great thing to practice. Set your cooking goal for yourself, just like these carefree cooks did. Experiment with ravioli until you get it just right. Work on the different colors. <clears throat> of roux from blonde to brick like Peter did. Figure out how to make exotic and worldly soups and rice dishes or, or maybe master risotto finally like Ruth Ann did or follow the crepe queen Christy down the path of making the best crepes ever. Set your goal, don't just cook. Don't just cook this year, learn as you cook. And you know what? You own that knowledge forever. Not just one dish, you own it forever. And I'm so looking forward to a great 2020 where we all gain more freedom in our cooking, where we're reaching our cooking goals, no matter if you need to do it, if you have to do it, or if you want to do it, 
your cooking should progress this year, and I want to be here with you to do it. Uh, we've got the What Am I? Can't forget this before we go. The What Am I? Today, it's a food mill. Before we had a food processor or a Cuisinart machine, uh, this is an item that as you turn the crank, it press, presses things through a mesh screen. It was the first way to puree things. Your mom or grandma might have had one. Oh, look, please share this video, like this video with your friends. They might need some cooking goals this year, or they might be inspired by something that one of our carefree cooks has made. So sharing is caring, and I really do care about the way we all cook for the coming year. And, you know, if your goal is to become a sauce boss in 2020, we can make that happen real quickly. <laughs> My brand new sauce boss pro mastery sauce course it's only a week old. It was just last Tuesday that I started talking about it. I'm already getting rave reviews for the culinary school approach to sauce making that you can find in this course. And, you know, we're still in the early stages uh, of launching this course. There's a bunch of free bonuses that come with it. And now I've also decided to add the new soups curriculum to it and my three survival soups class from yesterday. So go to sauceboss.com slash order saucebosspro.com slash order to get started today. And this is Chef Todd Moore reminding you that there's a method to your 2020 cooking success. Bye, everyone.